Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. We continue where we left off the other day regarding our reflections on the Ten Commandments. We were talking about the Sixth Commandment Monday, and it was, we were talking about contraception. Uh, we'll look at a couple of thorny questions which sometimes need to be addressed regarding contraception today, and we'll recommend a book in this regard. It's called Life Issues, Medical Choices. It's by Dr. Janet Smith and Dr. Christopher Kayser, published by Servant Press, 2016. It has a whole chapter dedicated to contraception, sterilization, NFP, which is very insightful. So some of what we'll share here is actually found in that book. Question one, can birth control be taken for medical or other health reasons? Well, if the treatments for a medical condition that you have also have birth control effects that are not willed, the general rule is that that is acceptable. Humani Vitae at paragraph 15 explicitly says that. It says, the church does not consider illicit the use of therapeutic means necessary to cure bodily diseases, even if a foreseeable impediment to procreation should result therefrom, provided such impediment is not directly intended for any motive whatsoever." Unquote. So it's good to note here also that many faithful Catholic doctors think that there are actually very few occasions when it's necessary for women to take infertility-causing hormones. Doctors often prescribe the pill for all sorts of conditions that can be treated successfully with non-hormonal medicines and by lifestyle changes like weight loss, eating properly, exercise. Dr. Smith and Dr. Kayser say that uh, women whose physicians recommend the pill for therapeutic reasons should attempt to discover if there are any other viable treatments for their medical condition. If it's a, if it's a question of taking infertility-causing hormones that prevents implementation, that's actually a little different, right? That actually would be an abortifacient. So human life begins at fertilization not at implementation, implantation, excuse me. So the life of the embryo actually needs to be protected even before it's implanted in the uterus. If it's a question that touches you or someone you know, I'd suggest reading up on these things from faithful Catholic sources. We can't delve too much into detail here. Question two, can I be in a state of grace if I'm contracepting? The answer is no, unless Honestly, you're totally ignorant that that's a serious sin. It's never even occurred to you to ask about it or find out the truth. That's what we call invincible ignorance. Also, if our will is seriously compromised, maybe from excessive fear or from pressure or threats from our spouse or even perhaps from the government, which might not be too far down the road here in the West, actually. These things actually diminish our culpability and may even eliminate it altogether. So if the intellect, meaning our understanding, or the will, meaning our ability to choose, if either of these are compromised, that always diminishes the guilt for whatever sin we commit. It's best to talk with a good confessor if we're not sure about what to do with our situation. Question three, here's a touchy one. Uh, what if a spouse has HIV? Is it moral to use a condom if that's the case? Well, the short answer is that there's no definitive statement on this from the magisterium, but many indications from a moral theology point of view would point to a negative response. Again, Dr. Smith and Dr. Kayser cover that question a little better than we will here. Question four, what if someone who's been sterilized or they've had a vasectomy, once they realize that that's a serious sin and they repent of having done it, are they morally obliged to get a reversal? Well, if there would be undue physical and financial burdens in getting a reversal, the answer is no. If there aren't undue physical or financial burdens involved, well, theologians don't agree on that question. I've heard different things personally. It would be best to pray about what to do. And my thought is that if you're truly repentant, then you try to undo the damage that you've done by your sins, right? So you try to have a reversal, but it seems at least from what I've read that that's, there's liberty on how people answer that question. 
And the last question we'll look at for today, can I be in a state of grace? Can I be in God's grace if my spouse is contracepting? Good question. Actually, Pope Pius XI already noted this problem in his encyclical Casti con Nubi in 1930. In the encyclical, the Holy Father said this. He said, the Holy Church knows well that not infrequently one of the parties in marriage is sinned against rather than sinning when for a grave cause that partner reluctantly allows the perversion of the right order. In such a case, there is no sin, provided that mindful of the law of charity, the one partner does not neglect to seek to dissuade and deter the other from sin." Unquote. So, can I be in the state of grace if my spouse is contracepting? The answer is actually yes, but the three conditions that we'll mention actually all have to be met. One, the action of the cooperating spouse, meaning the one who's innocent, has to be licit. So what does that mean? It means you can't be the one who's contracepting. So if you're a man, you can't be permitting what's called onanism or using a condom or having a vasectomy. If you're a woman, can't you be using birth control or using the barrier method or any other contraceptive means or devices? Cooperation with the spouse whose sinning is not licit, meaning it can't do it, if the guilty spouse, the other spouse, is using a means that have abortive, uh, abortive effects, basically, like the morning after pill, for example. You can't participate in that. Why? Because that's actually taking a human life, which is even more sinful. So you can't cooperate with doing that. The other condition, the innocent spouse cannot intentionally consent to the sin. I think we understand this. That's what we call what's, what's called formal cooperation with evil, not just material cooperation. Formal cooperation means, yes, I want to do this thing that's wrong. So you have to be against the practice, and you have to communicate that to your spouse. Try to help them through prayer and charity and dialogue in the hopes that they'll actually abandon that behavior. So you have to make it clear that you don't approve of doing this. This obviously means that, doesn't mean that you don't experience the pleasure that goes along with the conjugal union. So people don't have to be scrupulous in that respect. Last condition, there needs to exist motives which are proportionately grave for cooperating with the spouse who is sinning. For example, if I don't have relations with my spouse, they'll become violent or we'll have serious conflicts in our marriage or they'll leave me or they'll divorce me or maybe they'll look to someone else. So there's danger of infidelity. So these things have to be taken into consideration. There are other delicate questions that we could enter into here and that we don't want to. We actually don't even want to say what we already said. It's a little embarrassing to preach on these things sometime, but we will stop here for now. Uh, may Our Lady give our married couples the grace to say yes to God's plan for conjugal love, and may she also help them to learn to truly surrender themselves to the Lord and His perfect will for their lives and for their families. Praise be Jesus and Mary now and forever.